let, let's have a little look at this week's AEW Dynamite the next year. So Sid, that you mm-hmm. you do watch uh, AEW fairly regularly. You've you've caught up with this week's episode, and yeah. this week's episode it kicked off with a match: Cody uh, versus Ortiz from uh, from uh, the Inner Circle, of course. And the, the fans were really really into this opening match uh, with with Santana, Ortiz's partner, of course, and Brandy Rose. They were they were in su- on the outside. They were getting involved uh, at points throughout this match with a little bit of outside interference. Uh, there was Cody with his with his. Well, well, I need to ask your opinion. What's your thoughts on Cody's neck tattoo, then, Lexi? There's been a lot of things going online about Cody's neck tattoo. When I first saw it at uh, the uh, latest pay per view Revolution, I was kind of thinking, well, I hope it's a transfer because I hope I, I, I wouldn't want that on the side of my neck. It is quite colourful. It's quite big and bold, uh, but it is a a yeah. Uh, uh, a proper, uh, fully paid for tattoo. So, uh, are you a fan of Cody's neck tattoo, Lexi? I, I like it, but I wouldn't have put it on the neck. No, I'd, I'd have put it in between the shoulder blades. Yeah. That's just me. Um, it's done. Listen, I can't talk. Um, you know. There's somebody going into the Hall of Fame this year that's like covered in tattoos, and I just want to grab him and be like, "Look, stop, stop. <laughs> you, you were fine. You were fine. Like ten years ago, you were fine. Stop now. Stop." Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah. It's the placement. It's the. It's, it's where it is on the neck. But uh, certainly not. Not for me. But uh, I'm sure we'll get used to it. I'm sure I'll get used to it. But yeah. uh, Cody won this match against Ortiz for a submission uh, through a figure four leg lock. Um, the, the the most notable thing that happened during this match though was was the presence of uh, Jake Roberts, Jake the Snake Roberts, and he's a uh, newest uh, the newest acquisition to AEW. Jake Roberts, his client, uh, yeah. Lance Archer. They were sitting at ring ringside. Uh, Lexi, you know, does this mean that Lance Lance Archer if I can get his name out right, is uh, is Cody's next feud, his next opponent, and if so, you know, does Lance, Lance Archer and uh, Cody does it do anything for you for the future? I mean, let, 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 I mean, just digging a bit deeper, this makes it. I think Cody's uh, fifth um, kind of big feud. Um, in the last nine or ten months, he started with Dustin, uh, of course, in the lead up to Double or Nothing last year. Then Sean Spears, then Chris Jericho, uh, when he fought Jericho for the world title. Uh, MJF at Revolution. And then uh, number five could be Lance Archer. So Cody's kind of going through these big feuds with Lance Archer possibly being his next big rival. Um, but uh, d- 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 does that sort of match up? Does it do anything for you for the future? Um, it's It's an interesting one. For me... I don't feel like the feud with MJF, MJF is finished. Yeah. Um, I I don't. I, I think that there's a lot more to come from it. Whether Lance Archer has um, a part to play in that, possibly. Um, but I kind of feel like Cody Rhodes is damned if he do, damned if he doesn't. If he was constantly in the title picture, he would get criticised. And then, obviously, he's now sort of getting criticised for having too many feuds. Yeah. And it's like, well, what do you want the guy to do? Do you want him to be in the title picture and be like, OK, I'm going to be the face of this company and I'm going to run the business and I'm going to do the Or do you want him to go, actually, I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to put over other talents in the process of making myself look like the wrestler I want to be portrayed as, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Couldn't have put it better, better myself. And I mean, regardless of whether individuals that I think Cody's had uh, too many big fuse too close together. Cody makes it work in the ring, you know, whether it's against Sean Spears or whether it's against an MJF or or Dustin Rhodes, you know, it it works and the build up to these matches get you really pumped and really hyped for, for the match itself. And uh, yeah, I I think regardless of whether Lance Archer, um, his his next big feud, I I think he'll make it work regardless. But I also agree with you. I don't think there's, uh, I I, I don't think it's over between Cody and MJF. And I personally want to see one more big match between those two. Um, But um, I mean, during that little segment, Lance Archie did kind of tease hopping over the rails and it had to be held back by Jake Roberts. Um, but uh, I've got a feeling that Lance Archer might 
a crop up possibly in the front row to other people's matches as well. Although we did see the segment on last week's Dynamite with Jake Roberts and his promo, his very hot and uh, scathing promo towards uh, Cody Rhodes uh, in the ring last week. But um, it's interesting. And uh, it's one of them threads. It's one of them storylines, uh, Lexi, that, that that makes me want to tune in and watch Dynamite every single week. So, But uh, yeah. I, I, I like Lance Archer. He's, he's really, really good um, in New Japan. Uh, fantastic. Um, at uh, Wrestle Kingdom in his match against John Moxley. So I can't wait to see what he brings to AEW. And he's a very, very bright acquisition. But then after the match, there was a backstage segment, Chris Jericho in the inner circle. They address uh, the big uh, blood and guts war game style match that's taking place in a couple of weeks time on Dynamite between the inner circle and the elite. Uh, when the camera pans down, to, it shows that a beaten Nick Jackson trapped underneath a set of like pull down shutter doors uh, with blood coming out of his mouth. Uh, seemingly in a lot of pain from the attack by the inner circle putting uh nick jackson in doubt for that blood and guts uh match beyond on the 25th of march and you then had uh, matt jackson kenny omega cody and dustin rhodes they rushed to nick's aid the inner circle quickly make their uh their their, their, uh, their escape their disappearance um but uh, that brings us to another question that we had sent to us by uh, ashley clements now Ashley kind of wasn't a big fan of kind of how this segment played out. He says, does uh, AEW need to work on backstage segments after what uh, what this week, um, after the inner circle attacked Nick Jackson and left the scene, you had the elite immediately uh, enter on camera and not allowing enough time for the, for the heels to leave and the faces to enter um, to, uh, to attend to their friend in danger after the beatdown. So I kind of thought the same, and this was even before Ashley kind of sent the question when i saw dynamite i thought well the heels are just left and within a couple of seconds you had the inner circle there now if i was one of the uh uh if i was one of the elites i would have chased after the the the, the inner circle or you know but maybe there was a there, maybe a back door that they escaped out of quickly and uh were, were gone before the elite turned up but uh any thoughts on this segment did you think the same did you have similar thoughts to myself uh when this happens uh, backstage on dynamite this week lexi um I I noticed it, um, but actually, there's there's a few ways of looking at it. One, the inner circle had the opportunity to get all members of the elite together and pick them off one by one. Yeah. And sort of go well, you know, if we if we want to take you down, we can. But. For me, the time that passed wasn't really an issue. I mean, they're athletes, you know, it's possibly a small venue. We don't know the layout or, and stuff like that. One thing I picked up on, though, was when the camera panned down to Nick on the floor, I think it's Excalibur that says, those doors are really heavy. And the next thing is, Omega lifts it up with ease. <laughs> yeah. And it's I was cool. like, <laughs> I was like, um, okay, I, I know I'm supposed to suspend my disbelief, but when that happens, obviously not. Um, but the whole um, chaotic nature of it reminded me a bit of um, when the NWO first formed, um and they picked Rey Mysterio up and long darted him into the production truck. And that scene of chaos and, you know, Macho Man jumping on the limo to try and get in and stuff like that. Just reminded me of that, yeah. um, which was really nice. Because actually, sometimes that's what I want from wrestling. I want a little bit of chaos and a little bit of, you know, ooh, dastardly deeds from the heels. So, yeah. I, I agree. And I thought the segment worked really, really well. And I thought the, the beat down of uh, Nick Jackson and the way he seemed kind of in pain and, and bloody, bleeding from the mouth, it, it looked uh, it looked realistic. And I, I quite enjoyed the segment, to be honest with you, and not, not something you see every week from a WWE product. Um, AEW are a little bit more edgy um, and they do kind of tend to show these sort of uh, backstage segments in a, a little bit more of a realistic light. But I think it worked. So I, I'm a fan of it and I'm, I'm a fan with how it played out. And it does build a little bit more excitement to this big 
uh, war game style match in a couple of weeks time as well Alexi so uh, I'm all for it definitely but we'll talk more about the, the match beyond a bit later on uh, but th- then we had a segment with uh, Christopher Daniels in like a Dark Order um, a Dark Order Sucks segment I think it was called uh, trying to put some distance between the rumours of him being part of the Dark Order by challenging both Eva Lono and Stu Grayson to a one-on-one match on a future episode of Dynamite in AEW Dark, whilst challenging the Dark Order to prove the existence of the Exalted One. So I think if anybody is a fan of um, uh, kind of Matt Hardy, and his YouTube show, and the Young Bucks appearing on his YouTube show recently. I think all signs are pointing towards Matt Hardy possibly being the exalted one. Now that we know that Lance Archer isn't going to be the exalted one, there's still a possibility of uh, of uh, Brody Lee, uh, what's his WWE name, um, the former Wyatt's family member. Oh, uh, but Luke uh, Luke Harper, yes. How could I possibly forget that he's still to come on the scene? He yeah. signed with AEW. There's a chance that he could be the exalted one. But uh, are your kind of your thoughts along the same line as mine, then, Lexi? That it, it looks like it's pointing towards Matt Hardy, doesn't it? I would. They are, but I would like it if it wasn't. And they're they, trying to throw us a swerve ball, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it, it's. It's unlikely, but Lance Archer could still be the the exalted one. Yeah. Um, you know, because originally, if you go back to the um, higher power storyline in WWE, one of the pitched people to be this higher power was Jake the Snake. Um, so, yeah, it, it might be playing back to that and seeing the what what may have happened kind of thing. Um but what I loved, and I don't know whether anybody else picked up on it, was Christopher Daniels dropped in a massive Simpsons wrestle- uh, reference. I he, didn't catch that. What he, was it? When he started, he said, hi, I'm Christopher Daniels. You may remi- remember me from such shows as. And of course, as any Simpsons fan will tell you, it's Troy McClure. Troy McClure. That, that does yeah. that. So, uh, yeah, I was well <laughs> impressed with that. <laughs> Um, love it yeah and it was amazing so I was just like yes we we can we can have this version of Christopher Daniels it's all very good yeah yeah I was highly entertained I've not been the biggest fan of Christopher Daniels um I've not been been the biggest follower of Christopher Daniels but I am quite enjoying what he's doing here um and kind of the little tease as to whether he's part of the dark order or not and I did enjoy this segment as well um and then we had quite an entertaining tag match between Chris Statlander and uh, Sheeda versus Nyla Rose and B Priestley with um Rose and Priestley getting the win following uh, Nyla Rose's beast bomb um and uh, after the match Nyla Rose's tag partner B Priestley she appear to show a bit of a desire towards Nyla Rose's championship so that'd be interesting to see how that develops uh but my, my favorite team of all in AEW and I don't know about yourself it's the Jurassic Express I'm a big fan of Jungle Boy big yes. fan of Luchasaurus uh Marco Stunt is definitely growing on me uh, yeah. but they took on the duo of the Butcher and the Blade and MJF um, in, in quite a fun and entertaining six-man tag. You had Lutasaurus. He was the real star of this match. He was really kind of on top form, hitting a, a step over sent on, a double choke slam, a standing moonsault in this match. Uh, we also saw a brief uh, kind of hoss fight between Lutasaurus and the Butcher. That was quite fun. Um, then after a, distract, a distraction from the bunny on the ring apron, the end of the match came after Jungle Boy was launched off the top of the turnbuckle to the outside. Wardlow attached Luchasaurus, attacked Luchasaurus, and uh, MJF made Marco Stunt tap out with an armbar in the centre of the ring. So this was a fun and entertaining six-man, uh, Lexi. Uh, it, it, it was also announced on comment, commentary, which I find staggering every time I hear it, but MJF will soon be turning 24 years old, and Jungle Boy is only 21. Now, when I was 21 or 24, uh, I, 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 I was probably, uh, you know, <laughs> in all the bars and clubs around Oxford. Uh, I don't know about yourself, but uh, these guys have got the world at their feet Excellent professional wrestlers, and they've got. Uh, they're obviously going to be the future of AEW and professional wrestlers in general. Which I think they're still only 21 and 24. It was the same a few years ago when we were talking about Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne and yeah. how young and accomplished they were. But uh, give us your thoughts on what went down here, and uh, you know, AEW are really kind of breeding the, the kind of future uh, world world stars, really wrestling stars, um, certainly in AEW. And um, you know, you wouldn't 
think MJF is such a talented heel and such a talented wrestler um, as he's Jungle Boy. You wouldn't kind of think that they were so young and so accomplished at such an age, would you? No, I mean, I've been really impressed with both MJF and uh, Jungle Boy um, just because they're so different. Um, MJF reminds me of the, you know, old school, arrogant, gobshite of a heel. Yeah. Um, and Jungle Boy is just so different. Um, and I've I've written here, I adore the entrance of Jurassic Express. Yeah. But did you catch that uh, Luchasaurus kicked Marco in the face? I didn't. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that again. <laughs> so just for just so you know where you're looking for when they all get onto the the ring apron before they get into the ring. If you watch, um, Luchasaurus puts his leg up and accidentally gets Marco in the face, um, and the camera angle changes dead quick. Um, and I was like, "Whoa, what happened then?" So if I'm wrong, you know, but that's what I thought <laughs> happened. I, I genuinely thought he got kicked in the face. So, um, but yeah, um, it's it's exciting to see where they're going to go with it. Um, Especially, you know, Marco and his daredevil stunts. Yes. You know, I've I've written down Marco don't die um, for something that he did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was when he he launched himself out of the ring at someone, and I was like, don't die, please don't die. Um, but yeah, it's 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 great. Um, and a question that that I have now is our AEW teasing a three-person tag title belt possible? Wow. It, yeah, it's very interesting. In fact, I think we had a, a, a listener's question on a, a couple of episodes ago uh, regarding a mid-car title for AEW. And I suggested the very same thing, that it could be introduced or looking towards uh, a trio's title, especially when you look at the amount of stables and factions they've got and the kind of three-man teams in, in AEW. And um, I don't know if it's, somebody responded to uh, a similar question um, on the Wrestling with Jonas, uh, Facebook page the other day saying that AEW have already announced a trio's title for 2021. Now, I haven't heard that. And if I did come across it, I must have skipped over that detail. But I think it's it's looking like a, a natural mid-card title for AEW to have, especially when you look at teams like the Jurassic Express and, you know, the Dark Order and, you know, the, 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 the multiples that you can have, the, uh, Death Triangle as well, and we're going to be talking more about them yes. very soon, but there's so many, um, Best Friends and Orange Cassidy, I mean, the list goes on and on and on, they've probably got about uh, six to eight uh, trios or combos that they can kind of put together they can have a fantastic tournament to kind of lead up to the first ever champions. But uh, yeah, I think they should. And uh, it, yeah. it, it, it would be a lot different as well. It's kind of more of a, a Mexican style tag team type championship that you don't often see in North America or certainly yeah. not in promotions that I watch. Um, but yeah, watch your space. I think that could be really, really good. Um, and then that brings us to our ne next match. I did mention just a moment ago, Death Triangle, the combination, the newly formed uh, stable of Pac, Ray Phoenix and Pentagon Jr. And uh, they win up against a trio of private party a team that we haven't seen on dynamite for a while and uh, one of my favorites of all time joey janela and this was really fast paced and action-packed six-man tag now i, I love the combo of pack and the lucha brothers however i have to be honest and say that I was rooting for Joey Janela in this one. I've got to be honest, I am a big fan of Joey Janela. Uh, Mark Quinn and Isaiah Cassidy, a private party, of course, they, they demonstrated why they were so popular in the tag team title tournament last October. And they kind of reminded us of all their fantastic high flying flair between the two of them. Uh, but it was Death Triangle who came out the victors thanks to a, a package pile driver double foot stomp combo followed by a black arrow from Pac for the pinfall victory. Now, after the match, uh, Pac, Ray Phoenix and Pentagon Jr., they slapped on their death triangle triple submission hold on Private Party and Janela. And that was until the trio of the best friends and Orange Cassidy, they came out to chase uh, death triangle out of the ring. 
Um, so uh, uh, we, we find out that Death Triangle and uh, will be taking on Orange Cassidy and Best Friends in a six man tag on next week's Dynamite. And uh, I think we're also we're also scheduled to uh, have the unveiling of the Exalted One next week uh, on next week. So Dynamite then, uh, Lexi. So the, it, it will all become clear um, after our conversation just a moment ago with who the Exalted One is. And uh, I think there's also going to be a six man match uh, featuring members from the Elite and members from the Inner Circle. Uh, just yeah. one week before the Bloods kind of war game. So next week's Dynamite, I mean, already it's got me uh, hooked, to be honest with you, a really stacked lineup. Uh, yeah. But uh, any thoughts on the debut of Death Triangle? Anything that caught your eye in that match? If that makes sense, because like you look at them and you go, oh, they're not going to have much in common, possibly. And mm. there might be some conflicting um, agendas in the group didn't seem to show um but yeah i love i love them um and i can't wait to see more of them i can't wait to see more of pax promos either um i think he's so underrated as well um and you know hopefully one day we'll see him as as a world champion somewhere um but yeah um but also backing it up with with those you know with um ray phoenix and pentagon jr um you know i i love it um especially because pentagon jr i followed off and on during his career so where i can find him um i'll often dip in just to watch him because i think he's fantastic um so yeah yeah, it's all good. And, and, and Ray Phoenix, I think, is sometimes the young song hero of that uh, of that uh, tag team, the Lucha Brothers. And, and Ray Phoenix, I mean, when you look at him in the ring, he's he's lightning quick. The dives he does through the ropes, and then he, he does a lot of rope wa- walking as well, a lot of uh, action yes. off of the ropes where he does his, his walking across the ropes, then does some sort of hurricane run or dive and crazy move. But uh, he is just phenomenal. And, and like I say, sometimes the unsung hero of that group. But having the three of them together is very, very exciting and um a, a, you know a, a group that a lot of wrestling fans are definitely behind um but uh, then that leads us nicely to our main event of this week's dynamite um and it was a match between uh, uh can i still say le champion i used to love saying le champion with chris <laughs> jericho but uh, le champion chris jericho sammy Guevara going up against hangman adam page and of course adam page and uh, kenny omega are the tag team champions in AEW. but uh, omega is seemingly out at the moment with a broken hand uh, following yeah. his match um or their match at Revolution. So Adam Page, it's been advertised Adam Page was going to have a mystery partner. Uh, Now, it was believed uh, from an earlier promo with the Young Bucks that Nick Jackson was possibly going to be that mystery partner. Then he was put out of action thanks to that backstage attack at the beginning of the show. Instead, Dustin Rhodes inserted himself into the match to be Paige's partner. Now, during the match, uh, we had uh, a lot of outside interference from other members of the Inner Circle, as you would expect, including uh, Jake Hager. He was there as well. Uh, Jericho mocked Adam Page by taking a drink from a a fan at ringside, only to be uh, punched in the face by Page, spitting beer all over the place. That was quite fun. Uh, Hangman then took a gulp of the very same drink uh, before throwing it to the floor. Now, not only was it a perfectly, you know, a, a waste of a perfectly good beer, Lexi, uh, but yes. I'm not entirely sure about their hygiene levels uh, in yes. that part of the match, to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, um, it has to be said that Adam Page, he's really turned a corner recently. You know, he's always been a brilliant performer, but now his character is really super over with the fans. And uh, I think he's, he's one of the hottest uh, individuals in the promotion at the moment. Are you, are you getting behind Adam Page? Do you think that the, the, the latest kind of character development within Adam Page has, has kind of made him more interesting all round? What would you say? I liked Adam Page anyway from okay. uh, his New Japan days. I not worry, but I become uncomfortable when the drinking element is constantly brought up. Yeah. Um. You know, it's well known that wrestlers and addiction go hand in hand with one another. Um. I don't think it's needed, but that's just me. Um, I get why they're doing it. You know, it makes him seem more relatable or whatever. Um, but I, I don't know. I just don't. I can't buy into that part of Adam Page. 
Um, whereas, you know, if it was somebody else, possibly, yeah, great. Um, yeah. So I think as well, it's one of the things that AEW does that go, okay, we're going to do the complete opposite um, to WWE. And sometimes they WWE don't do those things for a reason. Um, you know, and, and people can say, oh, well, what about Austin? You know, I'm looking forward to 316 um, on Monday where, you know, Austin's there and at some point there's going to be a beer celebration. There has to be. Yeah. But it was a different time back then. And a lot of... Um, oh, I don't know. A, a lot of the social conscience is now more placed onto companies, especially somebody as influential as Adam Page. Yeah. Um, and the company as a whole. So I'm just kind of, I'm cautious around it, I think is the best way to word it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 I had the same feelings as you at the very beginning. I was kind of thinking, well, you know, is, is it a storyline that, that is appropriate or necessary. Um, but I think more than anything, looking at the character development of Adam Page, I think the positive is that it has made him a slightly more watchable individual, I suppose. I don't think the drinking angle is going to be a long-term thing, if I'm honest with you. Uh, but I think if it does what it needs to in the short term, then good for Adam Page. Um, yes, it, it's all part of an ongoing storyline that, that once again is quite intriguing and uh, it, it's getting people kind of watching on a week to week basis. But um, at the end of the match was pretty good, though, in this one where you had Dustin. He nailed a Canadian destroyer. He's getting pretty good at that, I've got to say. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, then uh, there's a buckshot lariat from um, Adam Page on Sammy Guevara. So Sammy Guevara really goes through the ringer on this one. And after the buckshot lariat, Page hooks the leg, gets to one, two, three. Uh, and after the match here, you had uh, uh, Dustin and Page. They both got attacked by the inner circle. Kenny Omega came down. Cody came down. They got beaten down as well. Um, and uh, Cody, uh, he got suplexed on the rampway. That looks pretty painful. And the uh, it, the inner circle were just about to uh, triple power bomb Adam Page off the stage in exactly the same way they did to John Moxley last week when uh, Matt Jackson came from uh, from the back uh, to make the save. Uh, but even Matt Jackson he got beaten down, and uh, the show came to the end thanks to a chair shot to the head from Jericho as this week's dynamite went off the air. So this was a, a pretty hot storyline uh, running through the entire episode, as a matter of fact, from the attack of Nick Jackson at the top of the show through to the match and then the attack of the elite at the end of the show, all perfectly setting up their five way kind of war games, blood and guts match in two weeks time. So I thought it's a nice thread that carried us through this episode of AEW Dynamite Lexi. Uh, the match was pretty good. Um, Sammy Guevara takes another pinfall loss, uh, but th there's a lot to unpick from this one here. Um, but uh, give us your thoughts on what went down here then. Um, I don't, I didn't see how it would have ended any other way, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you've got Adam Page, he's one half of the tag team champions. What do you do to keep them looking strong, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. Um, you know, I thought it was a masterclass in classic old school heel factions um and i think i've written down somewhere uh jr has put or jr says there's multiple distractions uh, at ringside and my reaction was no shit it's a heel faction of course there's gonna be <laughs> Absolutely. You know. And you know, whenever any member of the inner circle is involved, the other members of the inner circle are going to be there around ringside somewhere. But uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but as well with Jericho, there was lots of um, classic, you know, early heel Jericho, you know, so he went for the pin and he flexed his muscles and he shouted, come on, baby, which I haven't seen him do for a, a while. Um, but one of the things that I... Um, thought and it's funny that you said about um dustin doing the canadian destroyer i was like why has he never been world champ yeah you know and i was like seriously you know i think people might need to put that right but what i did like as well is the fact that um when matt 
Jackson came back to make the save, he made the save on Paige, but his feelings toward him still hadn't changed because he, he gave him the finger. He did. Um, and if you go right back to the beginning, um, they have the discussion, and I'm sure it's Matt that says to Nick, tell me you're not seriously thinking of teaming with this prick. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, what's going on there? So I thought that was a really nice way to end the show when it sort of shows that there's more tension going on in the elite and stuff, which, yeah. again, I need to, you know, I need to find out what's going on. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, co- there's continuity as well, Lexi. There's continuity, you know. Yeah. And if you look at the WWE product, it's not always continuity, and they don't always follow storylines through, and they don't always have this. I mean, I, I think some of the classic Monday Night Raws or some of the classic episodes of any WWE WWF show has always had a, a storyline arc, whether it be from a, a long-term promotion of yeah. a feud or a long-term promotion of a storyline, or sometimes you know just a a story that carries you through an episode of Raw, and you don't often see that nowadays and that's one thing that i as i alluded to in my kind of description there you know there was a thread that carried you through this whole episode of dynamite from the very beginning and when you had the young bucks there and matt saying to to nick what he said about teaming with with adam page and then the attack and then the match and then all the shenanigans afterwards and i really love that that storyline continuity that thread that carries you through and keeps you hooked i think AEW are doing doing it really really well at the moment yeah um it makes you as well it makes you um understand motives more and get behind the characters more um you know it's not just oh well we're gonna have this match because um so it is it's 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 lovely to see um you know and if uh you know the ratings are to be believed in the perceived wednesday night wars um, the fans are buying it too so yeah yeah and that, that's one thing that i'm loving about dynamite every single week is is kind of the uh storyline developments and the action is always good but the storyline developments are there as well and uh yeah i'm all for it 